Hare Krishna, <clears throat> welcome. Good to see you all. Uh, tonight, we're going to continue with our uh, study of the Nectar of Devotion, which is part of the Bhakti Shastri course. Uh, so far, we've covered Sri Upanishad and the Nectar of Instruction. Now we're studying the Nectar devotion and the nectar of devotion is said to be the law book the iskon for the Hare krishna movement and it is one of our most important books and it has been summarized the bhakti rasamrita sindhu the original work by srila rupa goswami has been summarized as the nectar of devotion by srila Prabhupada. so in the previous classes uh, we discussed uh, the preface, then the introduction, and last week we covered chapter one. <laughs> now, <clears throat> chapter, the introduction and chapter one discuss what we call Samanya Bhakti. Uh, Samanya means like a general overview of Bhakti, uh, of the process of devotion, bhakti yoga. Uh, as we mentioned in previous classes, the ocean uh, of the nectar of devotion, the sindhu, sindhu mm -hmm. means ocean. So the ocean has four sides, uh, the east, the south, the west and the north. So this first division, which we are studying, as we've mentioned previously, is the Eastern division. Uh, and then that goes for the first 150 pages or so of the Nectar of Devotion. And then we have the other sides of the ocean, which we won't study in the Bhakti Shastri course. So Samanya Bhakti, which is the introduction and the first chapter, which we've covered in the last few weeks, uh, that is the first wave of the uh, eastern side of the ocean. Uh, each side has divisions. So there are four divisions in the first section. There's Samanya Bhakti, Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, and, Bhava Bhakti, and Prema Bhakti. So uh, the Samanya Bhakti means a general overview of what devotional service is that's in the introduction and the first chapter now tonight uh, we're going to begin the sadhana bhakti portion which is the second wave of the ocean and the sadhana bhakti portion will go from uh, chapters 2 to 16. so it's the longest part of the uh, of the uh, the study of the eastern side of the ocean. Uh, and then Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti will be the, the last three chapters, 17, 18, and 19. So Sadhana Bhakti is what we are practicing. Sadhana, the word Sadhana means practice. Uh, you might have heard in yoga and things like this, Sadhana. So it means practice. So we practice Bhakti. Yoga, the yoga of devotional service to God, to Krishna, who is the object of our devotion. If you have devotion or love for, if you have love in your heart and you have devotion, you need to have an object of the devotion, which is called the Vishaya. Vishaya. We are the Ashraya, just like we have the word Ashram. Ashram means shelter or abode. So within us is love for Krishna. That is, we are the ashraya. We are the abode of the love. <coughs> and the object, because if you have love, you need an object. You need someone to love. The object of the love, the vishaya, is Krishna. He is the object of the love. So uh, devotion to Krishna, it must be focused towards him. 
uh, and this is called bhakti yoga, where we focus our devotion uh, towards Krishna. He is the object of our love. So how we serve him, that is called sadhana bhakti. And this section that we're about to study now will outline how to serve Krishna. Because if you want to please someone, you have to know what they like. You know, if you love someone, you have to know what they like. Otherwise, you might be doing things for them. And sometimes this is why relationships break down is because you're doing something for someone, but it's not what they want. It's not what they like. So therefore, the service is somewhat redundant. It's well-intentioned, but it doesn't please the person. So now we need to learn how to please Krishna. So this section will now describe that, how to please him in, uh, elaborately. So Prabhupada said, this is the law book for ISKCON. Uh, this is the, uh, the law book or the, the teachings, which everything we do in, in the Hare Krishna movement is based upon this book. All the practices that we do, all the sadhana, all the practices, it's all based on what is taught in this book. So that shows how important this book is. Uh, Stephen Rosen, who's initiated by Srila Prabhupada, his name is Satcharaj uh, Das. Uh, he's a great scholar, and he writes uh, many, he's written many books, The Six Goswamis of Vrindavan and all those different books. He's a great scholar. and well known in the academic circles and also within the Hare Krishna movement. He, he wrote that the three most important books, in his opinion, in our entire Sampradaya, our tradition, are the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is the original book written by Rupa Goswami, the Nectar of Devotion, which is Srila Prabhupada's summary study of uh, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and then the, uh, the Waves of Devotion, which was written by Danodar Swami, which is a companion study guide for the Nectar of Devotion. So Satcharaj says these are the three most important books in our tradition because the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is the foundation for our devotional service, the foundation for our the Hare Krishna movement, for the Bhakti Yoga uh, practice. So we'll begin uh, chapter two of the Nectar of Devotion. So the chapter begins, Srila Rupa Goswami says, there are three categories of devotional service, sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. So you, re you might remember last week, we mentioned there were two qualities uh, which fall into each of those categories. In sadhana bhakti, there is kleshagni and shubhada, developing good qualities and burning up your misery. We discussed this last week, and I also sent you in the group, uh, I sent uh, the chart of the information about those six, uh, the Sanskrit and so you know, uh, you'll need to know these things for your exam. Uh, and then in Bhava Bhakti, which is the next level of devotion, <clears throat> we have Sudulaba and Moksha Lagudakrit. Uh, Moksha Lagudakrit means it minimizes liberation. Huh? Were you here last week when we spoke of this? One week ago? Last Wednesday, were you here? No, I didn't want to. Okay. So last week we spoke on this, uh, moksha, liberation, mukti. When you practice bhakti, the desire for mukti becomes insignificant, liberation. And <clears throat> sudulabha means rare. It is very rare for someone to attain bhava bhakti. Bhava means to have deep emotions for Krishna. Uh, based on your stahi bhava, your eternal relationship with Krishna. <clears throat> this is very rare to attain this platform. And then finally, we have Sandrananda Visheshatma and 
Sri Krishna Karshani, which the two qualities of Prema Bhakti. <clears throat> Sandrananda Visheshatma means the bliss or the happiness you derive from serving Krishna in Prema with love uh, is indescribably thick. It is impenetrable. In other words, nothing else can enter your consciousness. No other material desire can enter your consciousness because you're so absorbed in love for Krishna. And then uh, Sri Krishna Kashini means your, your love is so strong, you control Krishna, you control God. Just like when you love someone very deeply, you control them. They, and we know ourselves, when someone loves us, they control us. So uh, when you love Krishna purely, without any material uh, desire or attachment, then you control Krishna. That's the quality of Prema Bhakti, Sri Krishna Kashani. So now, uh, Rupa Goswami Uh, Rupa Goswami now describes the qualification for practicing devotional service. Having described the characteristics of pure devotional service, Srila Rupa Goswami now explains the qualification for practicing it. If we simply have an attraction <clears throat> to executing devotional service, we are qualified to begin practicing it. Generally, this attraction comes from devotional service executed in previous lives. So this is an important point. Where does our attraction to serve Krishna come from? Uh, it comes from previous lives, what we call technically Agyata Sukriti. Agyata Sukriti means unknown devotional activities. In other words, you serve Krishna, you serve God, but you don't know you're serving God. What's an example? When someone takes prasadam, what is prasadam? The Hare Krishna food. So the Hare Krishna food, before we eat it, we offer it to God, to Krishna. He blesses it, it becomes spiritualized, and when we eat it, when we honor it, we become purified because it is spiritual energy, Daivi Prakriti. So some people, they eat Hare Krishna food, they don't know all this. They just think it's vegetarian food. But it's not just vegetarian food, it is spiritualized food, prasadam. And when they eat it, they become spiritually enlightened. Uh, so this is called Agyata Sukriti unknown devotional service, service to God. And when you do this for many lifetimes, you become purified. And then in this lifetime, we took up service to Krishna. We couldn't have taken it up the way we took it uh, as seriously as we have, unless we became purified in a previous lifetime. So this is, this is the process. It's called Igyata Sukriti. Uh, <clears throat> devotional service begins when we receive a devotee's causeless mercy and thus develop a slight taste or attraction to bhakti. So actually, where does the opportunity to perform devotional service come from? Ramanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavana Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadhe Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. Where does the opportunity come from? It comes from a Majjama Adhikari, a, a middle class devotee, or someone who is a preacher, someone who wants to give Krishna consciousness to others. That's where it comes from. That's where the opportunity comes from. You meet a devotee on the street. He says, here, have a, have a spiritual book. Or he says, here, have some Hare Krishna food. Or he says, or they, they chant past you. You're walking down the street and some Hare Krishna's chanting 
the holy names of Krishna. They walk past you. And you become purified. You get the opportunity by their kripa, by their mercy, to begin to practice devotional service. So this is where it begins. It begins when we receive the good fortune of coming in contact with Krishna's devotees. <clears throat> Uh, attraction or taste is the qualification for making a commitment to the systematic cultivation of sadhana bhakti. However, there is no qualification required for receiving causeless mercy and performing agyata sukriti. So anyone can begin this process. You don't have to have any qualification. You don't even have to be interested in spiritual life. You just come in contact with it, it will purify you and your spiritual life has begun, even though you did not know. Right? And then gradually you become purified. As your intelligence becomes purified, you become interested, you begin to ask questions, and then you progress in spiritual life. Uh, our qualification for sadhana bhakti depends on the strength of our taste or attraction to Krishna. The, no, the more pronounced our taste, the greater our qualification. Uh, on page 19 of the Nectar of Devotion, uh, Prabhupada writes, the person eligible for Krishna consciousness or devotional service can be classified by this particular taste. This taste, or we could say shraddha, Shraddha means faith. When faith comes, faith means I want to only eat prasadam or food offered to Krishna. I want to uh, deeply absorb myself in the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. I want to read Prabhupada's books as much as I can, as, as any opportunity I get. Uh, that, is, that is faith. That is taste, that is shraddha, or the beginning of spiritual life. Uh, advancement in Krishna consciousness is not based on our intellectual abilities, but our taste for hearing Krishna Kata. Right? Prabhupada writes on chapter on page 19. For persons who have a natural taste for understanding books like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, devotional service is easier than for those who are simply accustomed to mental speculation and argumentative processes. So we don't have to be very intelligent to take to devotional service. We don't have to have an ability to learn Sanskrit. We don't have to have an ability to memorize uh, uh, the Sanskrit and the verses and so forth. Our progress is based upon how much taste or how much desire we have to hear about Krishna, to hear spiritual topics. That's how we progress. Right? We don't have to be intelligent. We just have to like to hear. Uh, and that's how we progress. We just like hearing about Krishna. Maybe we don't remember everything. Maybe we don't memorize everything. But we just like to hear about Krishna. And in this way, we progress in our spiritual life. So now, uh, Prabhupada quotes, uh, the original text, which Rupa Goswami quotes here uh, in this portion of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, so Prabhupada quotes it in the Nectar of Devotion. This is the definition of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana means, bhakti means devotion, sadhana means in practice. So this verse uh, is also found in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Majalila, 
chapter 22, verse 105. Priti Sajja Bhavet Sajja Bhava Sa Sadhana Bida Nicha Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakachyam Priti Sajjata uh, The English is when transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti or the regulative di discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of the living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. It's a beautiful definition of what sadhana bhakti is. Uh, it is the practice, it is practicing those items of bhakti or those practices which awaken love for God, love for Krishna. Uh, we practice certain things and our love the Krishna awakens in our consciousness. That is called sadhana bhakti. That is sadhana bhakti. So, uh, this is the definition given by Srila Rupa Goswami. Prabhupada quotes on page 20 of the Nectar of Devotion. Uh, now, a very important point within this verse is sadhana bhakti must be executed with the senses. This is one of the verses quoted earlier about the definition of pure devotional service. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevana Bhakti Uchate. Uh, to become purified, we have to engage our senses in the service of the master of the senses, Krishna. That is called uh, sadhana bhakti. Practicing. Just like you might make a garland for Krishna. Uh, in the spiritual world, you will be making garlands for Krishna. So you are practicing doing it here so that in the spiritual world you can also uh, do the same services. So this is the practice of sadhana bhakti. To engage our senses in the service of Krishna. Uh, so on page uh, 20 uh, and page 21, Prabhupada begins to comment on this practice. Uh, the practice means to engage the mind and senses in a particular type of work. Sadhana bhakti means to engage the mind and the senses in work for Krishna. This work brings on the manifestation of bhava. So it, this is a very important point to understand, and that's why we must study Prabhupada's books carefully. There's a saying in English, never get on a ship or a boat if you don't know its destination. Are you getting the boat to test me? Plane? Okay, same thing. So you don't get on a plane if you don't know where it's going. Otherwise, you might end up in Sydney or Auckland or Adelaide or Darwin or Perth. If you want to go to Tasmania, to Hobart or Launceston, you have to get on the right vessel. Otherwise, you don't end up in the right place. So in the definition of sadhana bhakti is you have to be very clear from the beginning what your goal is. Your goal is to develop bhava or prema bhakti, which means love for Krishna. That's the goal. If you're doing all this, all of these Hare Krishna practices, all of this sadhana bhakti, and love for Krishna or attraction to Krishna is not increasing day by day, there is something wrong with your practice. Right? You should feel on an annual basis 
Now, I do this myself. I take my spiritual life very seriously, right? So every Kartik, the holy month in November, every Kartik, I look at my previous 12 months and I see, have I progressed in my spiritual development? Have I increased my love and attraction towards Krishna? And if the answer is no, if, if each year or each week or each month, whenever you do it, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says every Akadashi, we should look at our devotional service, which means every two weeks. Uh, if you look at your devotional service on a regular basis and you're not progressing, right, something is wrong with your sadhana, your practice. Because if you are practicing, devotional service properly, you should be going closer to the goal, which is developing your love and attraction to Krishna. So it's, a, it's a very simple process. So we have to be clear from the beginning. Don't start the journey unless you know what the goal is. And always have the goal in mind. The goal is to develop your love for Krishna. And you have to make sure that you're going towards that. Your realizations are deepening while you're chanting the holy name of Krishna. Is your realization deepening, right, on a daily basis? Mm. Uh, how does sadhana bring about bhava bhakti? Uh, adhering to sadhana practices purifies the heart. When executed with genuine longing, sadhana has the potential to awaken bhava bhakti. So that should be the feeling of the devotee. The devotee should be feeling uh, that some sentiment towards Krishna is awakening, right, as time goes by. We should feel our attachment. Prabhupada actually says in uh, the Krishna book, He's, uh, Prabhupada says, we should feel, how do you know if you're progressing or advancing in Krishna consciousness? Sometimes devotees ask, ask this point. They ask this question. How do I know if I'm advancing? Prabhupada answers in the Krishna book very simply. If your material desires are decreasing and your attachment to Krishna is increasing, you know you are advancing in Krishna consciousness. But if your material desires are increasing and your attachment to Krishna is decreasing, then you know that you are not progressing properly in your Krishna cons consciousness. Uh, now the word practice, Prabhupada explains this word practice or sadhana. Uh, the word Practice doesn't fully, as in Sanskrit, many of the words, the word practice doesn't fully uh, encompass the word sadhana. Uh, it only partially translates the word. Uh, many of the words in Sanskrit are like that. Uh, practice means that we're trying to acquire a skill that we don't possess. You know, I remember when I was a, a child, uh, we always hear the saying, we have the saying in English, practice makes perfect. But I remember one of my coaches when I was playing soccer when I was about eight years old, he actually said to us, and I always remember this, he said, practice does not make perfect. He said, perfect practice makes perfect. In other words, you have to practice or train uh, as if you were playing the game itself. If you don't practice or train, and you see all the top athletes and all the top practitioners in the world, the top pianists, everyone, if you want to get good at something, you have to practice perfectly or to the best of your ability. So in the same way, if you want to become advanced in spiritual life, you have to practice very seriously. It doesn't just happen automatically. Uh, now, practice, 
and this is pointed out in the verse, the definition of sudden. It doesn't actually teach us something that we don't already know. In this case, it uncovers something which is already there. Nietzsche Siddha Krishna Prema. Love for Krishna, love for God is already in our heart. But by doing this spiritual practice of bhakti yoga, it brings out the love which is already there. This is an important point to understand. The love is already there. The hearing and chanting, Shravanadi Jal, uh, the hearing and chanting process simply brings the what is already there out. The love becomes manifest by hearing and chanting about Krishna. Uh, on page 20, Prabhupada says, this practice is not for developing something artificial. In other words, Prabhupada's reinforcing this point. It's not something which is external. That's already in our heart. It just needs to come out. Then Prabhupada says on page 20, there are certain prescribed methods for employing our senses and mind in such a way that our dormant consciousness for loving Krishna will be invoked. As much as a child with a little practice begins to walk. So, the ability to walk, it's already in us. That's why you see a child, like a toddler, they just want to get up and start trying to walk. Why? Because it's already in us, the desire or the ability to walk. It just needs to come out, that's all. So in spiritual life, it's like that. Love for Krishna is already there. We just have to bring it out. That's what sadhana bhakti is for. Uh, Prabhupada writes that Srila Prabhupada compares the spiritual master to a psychiatrist who brings his patient to sanity by prescribing therapeutic behavior. The spiritual master or guru brings out the disciple's original sane consciousness by prescribing the practices of sadhana bhakti. So this point is interesting because this will, in chapter six, we will see uh, the emphasis on guru, accepting a guru, uh, gurus, plural. Uh, we need gurus, we need instructors to help us and guide us how to bring out this devotional mood, right? This devotional service, right? How does it come out? It comes out when we practice devotional service under the guidance of the gurus, right? The gurus give us the ability to, to bring this out. Uh, then on page 21, uh, Prabhupada explains what the essence of sadhana bhakti is. The essence of sadhana bhakti is to fix the mind on Krishna. Uh, as Rupa Goswami teaches us, the goal of Krishna consciousness is to always remember Krishna and never forget him. That is the goal of Krishna consciousness. Always remember Krishna. Never forget Krishna. That is our goal. So, sadhana is to fix the mind on Krishna, right? To always think of Krishna. That's what, what, that's what sadhana is for. Uh, Prabhupada says on page 21, he quotes the Bhagavatam. Uh, Prabhupada says, My dear king, one has to fix his mind on Krishna by any means. What is the means? They, they are the practices of sadhana, which we will hear about very soon in the, the, the coming chapters. Uh, it's, it's even described in this section that uh, even if you fix the mind on Krishna, not in devotion, but even in envy, like Shishupal, or fear, like Kamsa, 
you will become purified. But if you fix along Krishna favorably, Anukuyena, uh, then you will get more benefit. You will get supreme benefit. <clears throat> So then, uh, on page 22, Prabhupada describes there are two types of sadhana bhakti. Rupa Goswami introduces two types of sadhana bhakti, Vaidhi, regulated devotional practice, and Raganuga, spontaneous devotional practice. <clears throat> now, these two types of bhakti will be described in this wave the second wave of the eastern side of the ocean. Uh, chapters 2 to 14 would describe Vaiti Sadhana Bhakti. Vaiti means rules and regulations. Viti means rules. Rag Anuga Sadhana Bhakti, which will be described in chapters 15 and 16. Rag Anuga Sadhana Bhakti means to serve Krishna spontaneously, following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan. <clears throat> now, what is the difference between these two? The main distinction between the two is the source of their inspiration. Uh, Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti comes from uh, a natural spontaneous attraction towards Krishna and service to Krishna. This will be described in chapters 15 and 16. Uh, Vaiti rules and regulations, which will be described between chapter two and chapter 14. Uh, they rely on the orders of the guru and the scriptures and the fear, it's true, video rules are, are driven by fear. If you don't follow the rules, you will suffer or you will uh, not get the result that you that you desire. <clears throat> Just like road rules. You know, some people are very, very cautious on the road because they don't want to speed, for example. Because if they speed, they may get caught by the police and then you'll be punished, you'll be given a fine. So because of the fear of breaking the rule, it forces them to follow the rule. So in service to Krishna, if we fear that if we don't follow it, we will displease Krishna or we will suffer in this material world or whatever the motivation is, the fear that we have, that drives us to follow the rules. So one Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, is based on spontaneous attraction, natural attraction to Krishna, and Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti is uh, based upon uh, fear of not following the rules properly. Does anyone have any questions or comments at this point on anything that we have discussed? On page 22, Prabhupada says, in the beginning, by the order of his spiritual master, one rises early in the morning and offers arati, but then he develops real attachment. When he gets this attachment, he automatically tries to decorate the deity and prepare different kinds of dresses and thinks of different plans to execute his devotional service nicely. So in the beginning, you do it because you have to do it. You're following the rules, the regulations, but after time, you develop an attachment, an attraction, a natural spontaneous mood that you want to go to the temple early. You want to see Krishna. You want to serve. So on page 22, Prabhupada writes, He's defining or explaining Vaidhi or Vidhi or Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Uh, when there is no attachment or no spontaneous loving service to the Lord, 
one or one is engaged in the service of the Lord simply out of obedience to the order of the spiritual master or in pursuance of the scriptures, such obligatory service is called Baiti Bhakti. <clears throat> so, uh, what is the inspiration to perform Vaidhi Bhakti? Uh, Prabhupada quotes on page 22, uh, once again. Prabhupada says, Shukadev Goswami advises Maharaj Parikshit, My dear King, if you want to be fearless in meeting your death next week, for actually everyone is afraid of the power of the uh, at the point of death, then you must immediately begin the process of hearing and chanting and remembering God. So this is another impetus of vaiti. Some people find out they're going to die. You find out, oh, you have a disease, you have cancer or something, you have a tumor or something, you're going to die. So this is an impetus to become more serious in your devotional service, uh, to take up the rules because you, you are fearful. Oh, I might die, so I have to follow the rules and regulations very strictly, very carefully. So this is the an impetus to practicing uh, sadhana or devotional service. This is called Vaiti or Viti, based on fear. Uh, so what is the essence of Vaiti Bhakti? <clears throat> the rules and regulations of Vedic scripture impel the Vaiti Bhakta. But the Vedas propound countless rules and regulations, many of which appear contradictory. What is the essential injunction that the Vaiti Bhakta should follow? Srila Rupa Goswami quotes the Padma Purana. <clears throat> Smatavya Satatam Vishnur, Vismatavyo Na, Jatuchit, Save Vidi, Nishetasur, Itayura, Eva Kinkara. Always remember Krishna and never forget him. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras are servants of these true principles. So, this is the essence of the rules and regulations. Sometimes, uh, devotees may say there are so many rules. There are so many regulations. Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? The answer is that we have to understand what is the essence or the overriding uh, governing principle which governs all the rules that we follow. Right? One of the, or the, or the overriding principle is to always remember Krishna. That's why we do everything we do. Why do we chant our rounds? Why do we study the Bhagavatam? Why do we associate with devotees nicely? Why do we worship the deity? Why do we visit the holy Dham? Because it helps us to remember Krishna. Right? That is the essence of everything we do, all, all the rules and regulations. And the second part of the principle <clears throat> the first part is always remember Krishna. The second part is never forget Krishna. So there are also, there is viti or rules, but there are also nisheta. Nisheta means things you must not do or things that you must avoid if you want to progress in spiritual life. So what sort of things must we avoid? We must avoid those things which will make us or cause us to forget Krishna. 
Therefore, do not eat meat, do not have illicit sex, do not take intoxication, and do not gamble, as examples. These are things we do not do, because they cause you to forget Krishna. So these are called nisheda, or negative prohibitions, things that you must avoid, and then there are the positive things that you must do, which help you to remember Krishna. So that is the essence of everything we do. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Does anyone have any points? <clears throat> mm. So on page 24, uh, Srila Prabhupada writes, <clears throat> when the order is that one should always remember Krishna, the prohibition is that one should never forget him. Within this principal order and prohibition, all regulative principles are found complete. So everything is in that, in, the, in those instructions. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Everything we do in Krishna consciousness is based upon these two instructions overriding or governing principles of our practices. If we strictly follow every rule and regulation of Vana and Ashram, yet fail to remember Krishna and never forget him, our efforts will be wasted. We will receive ne neither benefit nor protection and will fall from our position. <clears throat> this is an interesting point because this will be elaborated upon uh, in the Nectar of Devotion by Rupa Goswami. Uh, Vanashram itself is not, they are not items of bhakti. Uh, for example, Grihasta Ashram is not an item of bhakti. Grihasta Ashram means married life. We get married in the service of God. This is called Grihasta Ashram. That is not an item of bhakti. That doesn't help you come to Krishna. Right? Just getting married doesn't help you come to Krishna. But rather when the husband and wife or the partners, when they come together to assist each other in becoming better servants of Krishna, then uh, marriage becomes purified. It becomes a devotional uh, commitment or a devotional uh, relationship. Uh, it becomes a devotional communion. But it is not bhakti in and of itself. Just getting married does not help you come closer to God. But when you when you practice devotional activities together uh, in the mood of assisting each other to come to Krishna, then it becomes a devotional principle. So this is important. Uh, Rupa Goswami says, Vana and Ashram in and of themselves are not devotional service. It's only when they're connected to Krishna. This is what the second chapter of the of the shima bhagavatam the first canto explains to us that vanashram when used in the service of god becomes uh, a means of purification uh Prabhupada says on pages 24 and 25 the four social orders namely the brahmanas the chatras the vaishas and the sudras have come out of the different parts of the universal form of the Supreme Lord. Similarly, the sannyasis have come out from the head, the varnaprastas from the arms, the grihastas from the waist, and the brahmacharis from the legs. The injunction herein is that one has to act according to his position. And by such activities, one must either satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead or else fall down 
from one's position. <clears throat> Uh, on page 26, Prabhupada explains. If people simply manage to worship or remember the Lord, then automatically they become very happy within this world as well as in the next. Right? This is, and we all know this, those of us who have been practicing bhakti yoga or devotional service, most of you uh, who are listening, if you've been practicing in your life, you realize that you become happy and peaceful in this lifetime. The closer you are to Krishna, the closer you, closer, closer you are to God, the more happy and peaceful you become, even in this world. It's only when you forget Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, there is nothing lacking in this world except Krishna consciousness. Right? Nothing is lacking in this world. Except Krishna, if you are Krishna conscious, you can be happy even in this world. Uh, and then in the next life, you can go back to serve Krishna perpetually. That's the power of devotional service. Uh, <clears throat> so, Prabhupada explains at the end of the chapter that because we are practicing the injunction, always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna, it doesn't mean that we should disregard injunctions, uh, worldly injunctions or uh, sorry about this, someone's trying to call me. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, just because we follow the principle of always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna, it doesn't mean we should neglect worldly injunctions or responsibilities. Right? And this is an important point that Rupa Goswami will make in this section of the Nectar of Devotion, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, we should not hastily disregard the other injunctions because those injunctions may assist us in our practice of vaiti sadhana if they are aimed at remembering Krishna. So we may have worldly responsibilities, but if we dovetail or engage those worldly responsibilities in, and connect them to Krishna, then those things can help to uplift us. So just like if you're married, you have an obligation to your spouse. If you have children, you have to look after the children. Right? You can't say that these things, these worldly responsibilities, will inhibit your devotion or your relationship with Krishna. But rather you have to dovetail those relationships, uh, those responsibilities you have in this world, you have to dovetail them into Krishna's service. In other words, help your partner or help your children also remember Krishna and never forget him. In that way, it doesn't become a, a, uh, a distraction or an impediment to your devotional life, your devotional service. Uh, Prabhupada says, Uh, Prabhupada says on page 27 at the end of the chapter, any activity sanctioned in the revealed scriptures and aiming at the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are accepted by saintly teachers as the regulative principles of devotional service. If one regularly executes such a service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, then gradually he rises to the platform of serving in pure love of God. So that's the end of the chapter, chapter two.
the beginning of sadhana bhakti. Does anyone have any questions or comments on um, what we have discussed tonight? Okay, so next week we will uh, study chapter three. There, your homework is to study chapter three. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the week, then you can please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for coming. Chill Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Jai. Good to see you. Jai. Thank you, Keshava. Thank you, Babu. Good to see you. Thank you, Babu. Thank you all for coming. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We'll see you on Sunday. Yes, for sure. Sunday morning. Thank you. Hare yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.